Hello everyone. Welcome back to Madhushala. Today in the third episode of the wine series, we will discuss the making process of red wine and white wine. Are you excited? Before getting started, those who came here for the first time, please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you will get all the notifications as soon as I upload the video. As you know that wine is made from wine grapes, but what is the exact difference between table grapes and wine grapes? Yes, the grapes we commonly eat are table grapes. Table grapes are larger in size with thin skin and mostly seedless, while wine grapes are smaller, seeded, thick skin and with high juice content. The acidity and sugar in grapes play an important role in winemaking. Wine grapes have more acidity and sugar than table grapes. Sugar content in wine grapes is between 20 to 24 degree breaks, while in table grapes it is 16 to 18 degree breaks. Example of table grapes are Sherald Seedless, Thompson Seedless, Bangalore Blue, Bangalore Purple, etc. While example of wine grapes are Cabernet Sauvignon, Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc, Merlot, Sauvignon Blanc, Shiraz, etc. Now we will discuss the process of red wine making and white wine making. We will also be knowing the difference in their making processes. So let's begin with red wine. The first and most important step in wine making is selection of grapes. Grapes are grown in the vineyards. When they reach the optimum maturity level, they are harvested. Good quality grapes are chosen having 20 to 26 degree bricks with pH ranging from 3 to 4 and total acidity ranging up to 7 gram per 100 ml. The grapes are mostly hand-picked or harvested by machines. The flavors of grapes decide the flavor of wine. So selection and harvest is an important step in winemaking. After the grapes are brought in the winery, the grapes are added to the destemming and crushing machine. As the name suggests, the destemmer removes the green stem of the grapes. This is done to control the excessive tannin level and vegetative aroma in the wine. The berries are crushed in the crushing process, making the juice to squeeze out. The grape juice going for fermentation is called as must. The must is then passed in the stainless steel fermentation tank or oak barrels through pipes. Depending on the winemaker, the yeast inoculation can be added to the must or start the fermentation with the natural yeast present on the grape skins. Fermentation is a highly controlled process and carried out in a sterile environment. The primary fermentation lasts for 2-3 to three weeks in which the sugars present in the must are converted to alcohol and carbon dioxide. The fermentation temperature for red wine ranges from 24 to 32 degrees centigrade. The red wine gets its color from the grape skin. That is why for red wine making, the fermentation process is done with skin contact. Once alcohol is formed, yeast dies eventually and settles at the bottom in form of lees. The clear wine is racked into another tank called as free run and the remaining skin is taken for pressing. Pressing can be done in various types of pressing machines such as basket press, balloon press, pneumatic press etc. The skin is pressed to remove the remaining wine without crushing the seeds as it contains harsh tannins and oils. This is called press wine. 
the pressure in a pneumatic press can reach up to 4 to 6 bars over a course of 2 hours of operation. The wine is then transferred to another tank or blended with the free run. Before starting with blending, those who haven't watched the first two episodes of the wine series, the links are given in the iCard section. Please do watch it. Wine blending is done just before bulk aging to allow the separate wines to make friends with each other. The goal of blending is to produce perfect balance between all the flavors, acid and tannins present in the wine. Blending of two or more good wine makes an excellent wine. The winemaker plays a key role in deciding the final blend. Blending can be avoided depending on the winemaker's choice. The next step in the process of red wine making is malolactic fermentation. This is performed for red wines and is mostly avoided in white wines. In young red wines, there is high amount of malic acid present. Malic acid makes the wine harsher, tart tasting and more acidic. By the help of lactic acid bacteria, this malic acid is converted to softer and more smoother lactic acid and CO2. It also forms various biomolecules such as diacetyl, acetaldehyde, acetic acid, etc. These gives wine a buttery, toasty and yeasty flavor. The acidity is also decreased. Malolactic fermentation is also performed in some white wines such as Chardonnay. Thus, malolactic fermentation influences the overall flavor profile of the wine. The next step is maturation. Wine can be aged in stainless steel tanks or oak barrels. Maturation in aging helps in microoxidation, which softens the harsh tannins in the wines. Wines can be aged from months to decades depending on the quality of the wine. French oak or American oak barrels are used which give a different flavor and aroma to the wine. One of the most important step in wine making is fining and stabilization. The insoluble matter which is suspended in the wine should be removed before bottling. This matter can include lees, tartrates, proteins, pectins, grape skin, stems, etc. Fining can be done by adding fining agents such as gelatin, bentonite, activated carbon, etc. Anthocyanin instability, protein instability and tartarate instability are prevented by various stabilization methods. Thus, fining and stabilization plays a crucial role in winemaking. Filtration is performed just before the bottling of wine. Filtration works by passing the wine through a filter membrane that catches the larger particles of the wine. Most filtration in a winery can be classified as either coarser depth filtration or the finer surface filtration. The various types of filters such as pad filter, cross flow filter and microfilter are commonly used in a winery. An absolute rated filter of 0.45 micron is generally considered in microbially stable wine. Who doesn't like a clear wine in their glass? So filtration plays an important role here. The final step is bottling. Wine is carefully bottled in dark green or amber colored glass bottles to avoid the damage from sunlight. During bottling, the oxygen is removed from headspace to prevent the oxidation of wine. 
different closures such as corks or screw caps can be used for sealing the wine bottle. Commonly quart or pint capacity bottles are used. The bottles can be of different shapes which are even specific to the wine regions. The next step is labeling with all the details and finally dispatch. As we now know the process of red wine making, we will now discuss how white wine is made. The main difference between making red wine and white wine is, in red wine the fermentation is done with grape skin contact, while in white wine the skin is removed before fermentation. The fermentation temperature is lower in white wine ranging from 16 to 20 degrees centigrade. In white wine, the pressing is done before fermentation, while in red, it is done after fermentation. Cold settling is an important step in white wine making. It is carried out at nearly 5 to 10 degrees centigrade for 2 to 3 days. This settles the solid matters. The clear must is taken for fermentation. As you can see, the further steps in making of white wine are the same as for red wine. White wines are mostly enjoyed fresh and only a few variety benefit aging. And that brings us to the end of today's episode. Please like and share this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comment section. I would be happy to answer them. And please subscribe the channel for more exciting videos. Wait for the next episode where we'll be discussing about the making process of rosé wine and sparkling wine. Until then, bye.